Hello and welcome. Today I want to tell you guys the story of my first play date in life. And yes, I'm being serious because it's important and it always stuck with me. I was in kindergarten when I first went on a play date with someone other than a member of my family. And it was with a girl. She had blonde hair and blue eyes and we became fast friends. And I'll never forget the car journey up to her house. I was so shocked to see so many trees and the houses were getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, the majority of you guys that are watching this, you already know my story. You know that my family came from nothing. In fact, at this time in my life, we were living in a very small apartment, and me and my two sisters were sharing a very tiny bedroom. It was a roach-infested apartment. I was used to the exterminator coming into that apartment. And so I was shocked when I got to this young girl's house, and I found something so different. She effectively lived in a mini mansion. I had never seen anything like it. She had her own playroom. She had her own bedroom. Everything was so immaculate. She had glass dolls lined up. She had a housekeeper. I remember just being shocked because what I learned at her house was that there were people that didn't live like me. I thought everybody had to share a room with their siblings. I didn't know that another option existed. I didn't know that there was something else. In fact, seeing that something else probably very early on made me think, I want that. I want that option. Fast forward 13 years, and I was 18 years old, and I went on a trip to China, 10 days in China. To this day, it remains the worst trip that I have ever been on because I was traumatized. I remember calling my then boyfriend from the hotel rooms and I was crying. I was crying because I just wasn't expecting to see what I saw. I thought this was gonna be a glamorous trip. Far from glamorous, it was the exact opposite. It was just sheer poverty. There were people actually showering in the streets. They had a horrible stench. Worse than that, the children, the children that were masked. I thought to myself, what is this? The oppression and the filth of China actually shocked me. I was recently discussing that trip with my husband, and I said to him, why do the people put up with that? Why do the people in China put up with living in those circumstances? Really, think about this for a second. They are a nation of about 1.5 billion people and every element of their lives is being controlled by a small totalitarian government. Why don't the people rise up against the government? Why don't they demand better conditions for their children, for themselves? A government which a very short time ago told them how many children they were even allowed to have via a one-child policy. That's absurd. Where are the uprisings? We never hear about them. And do you want to know what my husband said to me? He said, the people that live in China have never known anything else. Generations and generations spanning over a millennia of oppression. That is what the state has been in China forever. They don't know that freedom is an option. They don't know, like me as a small child, that there's something else which really makes me think about where we are today, right now in this society. Think about what's happening all across our country, all across the West, really. Think about it. Right now, there is a generation of children, and if we don't do something, right, they're not going to remember what the world was like before mass censorship. They're not gonna know what it was like to be able to say something in America and to not be They will have no memory. They'll just think, this is normal. I'm always supposed to have a mask on my face. They may not know what it was like to walk into a restaurant without being asked to show their papers. Are you vaccinated? Let me see your cards. Let me see if you, were, if you received the vaccine. Otherwise, you can't eat in here.
that there's the option of freedom. They won't know that it ever even existed. We are the last stand for that generation. Otherwise, they'll, they're never going to desire what they didn't know exists, just like China. Those children will never desire it because they will have never known that it existed. Think about how scary that is. I want you to consider my words today very carefully because they are a direct call to action. Welcome to Candace.